The promise of carrying a huge TV anywhere you want to go. Rokid is sponsoring this video to help clear the air on a few issues people complain about with wearable displays like the new Rokid Max. I've been covering glasses like these for a little while now. I'm a really big fan of this idea. They sent over the new Rokid Station for me to share some thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. Now here's the problem. There's a promise of a product like the Rokid Max, which I shot a video on this earlier in the year. It's a personal projector or a big screen TV that can fold up and fit in a shirt pocket. And it makes the most sense that these glasses, people would wanna use them with portable devices like laptops, the Nintendo Switch, or smartphones. A lot of people go to try something like this not understanding that their phones, even their really expensive phones, won't be compatible. People don't understand or even believe that their expensive premium smartphone can't support video output. iPhones, Pixels, the new OnePlus 11, almost all Xiaomi, and the vast majority of mid-ranger phones. All of these phones are powerful enough computers, but the manufacturers have not equipped them with the hardware to put out a video signal. The next phase of this product evolution is to take the limitations of the smartphone out of the equation. Rokid Station is a brain that can drive the glasses, it streams content, and it can mirror your phone or tablet screen. This is a battery-powered Android TV in a shell smaller than most phones. And it's built a lot like a Chromecast remote. We've got directional controls with a selector in the middle. We've got back and home and app buttons. Uh, for the hardware, there's a micro HDMI port on the left and a USB-C on the right. And Rokid includes a new cable to support the Rokid Max and the Rokid Air wearable displays. But with this being a micro HDMI, if you have the right adapters and the right cables, then you can plug the station into any other TV or monitor and use it just like a Chromecast. Getting into some hardware, we've got two gigabytes of RAM and 32 gig of storage. It's a decent amount of room for apps, but this is storage lean for saving media for offline playback. This whole puck is powered by a 5,000 milliamp hour battery with 18 watt charging. Powers the glasses directly, but you can also use the USB-C on the station to charge your phone like a little power bank. And for the software, basically anything you can install on an Android TV, you can install here too. For video streaming, currently working with Prime Video, Apple TV, Disney Plus, HBO Max, and a bunch of other solutions like YouTube and Plex. With all the Google-y software, the station can also be a receiver for casting from your phone. And that makes for a fast transition, you know, seeing something on your phone and then sending it to your glasses. Rokid Station really highlights a content streaming solution. I think that's likely the first use people are gonna be interested in. You know, the Rokid Max are all-purpose face displays, and I love showing off things like watching a movie while I'm traveling. These are awesome on a long commute or a plane ride or a road trip. Now we have a combo for media streaming to solve some of those teething pains if a phone or other computer isn't compatible with the glasses. And this should be easy. This should be familiar to anyone who's ever used a Chromecast or an Android TV. Considering the, the focus of this combo, the main thing I would want to see would be some kind of alternative view mode, like the ability to make playback smaller or to dock a mini window to a corner of your view, kind of like a picture-in-picture -picture mode. This isn't trying to set up all the techie advanced features of the Rokid Max, like augmented reality and 3D head tracking. These glasses are pretty capable, but it's addressing a core entertainment use. I appreciate the simplicity, but I think there's a little room here to bring some additional customization to an ease of use platform. Now we can nudge a little more advanced use out of the station though, screen mirroring from a phone or a tablet. It gives us access to all the apps on that phone. This is not a mirror cast solution though, so it might not be compatible with a phone's desktop mode if you have Samsung DeX or Moto Ready 4. But we could still launch a document or a spreadsheet send that to the glasses, and you can get a little work done with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. But the main focus is on streaming, and it works great for firing up something like Steam Link if you want to do some remote play from another PC. The station is powerful enough, the little chip inside here, to do some mid-tier mobile gaming. I played through some Riptide Renegade natively at some decently consistent frame rates. Because it's mostly focused on streaming, though, the station isn't doing as much 
data processing or video handling, and that gives us some pretty solid battery life. Running a couple streaming tests, I watched an hour of video on Disney Plus over Wi-Fi, dropped the battery about 17%, and that means we should be good for around five hours of streaming on a full charge. And while the charging isn't exactly speedy, it can be used while charging, so you should be in good shape for longer flights and road trips if you can plug it in. Lastly, because the processing demands on this are not exotic, this setup is passively cooled. There's no active cooling fan necessary for the station. Again, it's a little like a Chromecast. You, know, you plug a Chromecast in behind your TV and they usually don't have fans on them, only this is designed to also live in your pocket. I think this is a really exciting time for mobile displays a bit more conversation is happening at the high end of mixed reality headsets. You know, there's some new VR gear due out soon. And then these smaller and streamlined wearable screens are getting really fun too. Now, Rokit is setting the MSRP of the station at $139 with a small sale for the product launch and buying it as a combo with the Rokit Max AR glasses, MSRP at $549. And this has an interesting seat at the table. I can already predict some of the comments and reactions to this video. Techies are likely gonna want to see the really bleeding edge augmented reality stuff with all of the head tracking and the depth and the movement, but I think we also need options that are more streamlined and accessible. These glasses are different than a virtual reality headset, and that's kind of the point. I've shown them off to several family members and friends, and no one quite understands what these are until they have them on their face, until their eyes are right behind these lenses. Now, some folks get really interested in the cyberpunk potential. Other folks get really excited about the idea of just having a private TV or monitor. This kind of consumer tech is still so new, so unfamiliar, I think it's critical for companies to play with different options. Consumers don't really know yet what they might want or need in a face computer. I think the Rokid Station is a solid way to onboard someone with a familiar experience, and it's a handy little media streamer to boot. So another big thank you to Rokid for sponsoring these conversations. I will, of course, leave some links down below on the Rokid Max and the new Rokid Station where you can shop for these puppies online. And please let me know if you've been taking gear like this for a spin, what have your experiences been? Drop me the tastiest of hot takes down below. Now, as always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you clicking on links in video descriptions, hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy, pretty much everywhere. I host my podcast on Twitch. I'm spending a lot of time these days on the Mastodons, sharing a few more photos on the Flickers, a little less so these days on the Twitters and the Instagrams and the Facebooks, but I will catch you all on the next video.